What's up, Wargamers? I'm Isaiah, and welcome back to World of Wargaming. Today, we're going to be playing some second edition bolt action from Warlord Games. Now, more specifically than just a game of bolt action, we're going to do something that I've been waiting to try out since I first started playing bolt action in like the summer-ish of 2021, and that is some of the campaign play. Today, we're going to be playing the very first scenario for the Americans from Campaign Market Garden, which is Pathfinders at Over a Cell. Now, this book gives us some new unique units in the turn in the form of the American Pathfinders. There's also some stuff in here for Germans and the Brits. I just haven't looked at that so much because, well, because I play Airborne. <laughs> so, I'm really excited for this mission. I'm really excited to start this campaign. In my mind, now, Bolt Action is a very fun competitive game. It, it makes for a great competitive game because it is such a balanced system. Like, nobody really has, like, everybody's got their own little special rules, you know, but nobody's got rules that just absolutely break the game, I guess. I mean, that's not always true in the case of you talking, like, Gurkhas and Japanese spearmen and stuff and and, and things like that. But in a, in a standard reinforced platoon, there's only so much shenaniganry that you can do. And I like that about Bolt Action. I think that makes it a great competitive game. But I, in my mind, the, the part of where Bolt Action really shines for me is getting into these campaigns. These things, I love the way they're written. I love how they give you a little bit of, a little bit of backstory, a little bit of history on stuff. Um, but I'm getting carried away. I'm talking too much. I'm gonna slow down. So <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and get into this. If you haven't liked or subscribed or hit the bell notification yet, please do that. It helps us grow. And before we get into everything else, I have one special announcement to make. I'd like to give a big, big thank you. To my friend at Jayhawk Gamer on Instagram, Mr. Michael Stephen Crow, um, our very, very, very first Patreon subscriber, and at the Platinum tier, no less, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you for helping support the channel and, and liking what I do enough to actually come out of your wallet and say so. Um, it is greatly appreciated, sir. Um, so keep an eye out on the Instagram page for some of Mike's models that'll be showing up soon. Um, he'll also, we'll also have a, a model very soon with a name of his choosing. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the mission and the board and the armies. And let's get in to Campaign Market Garden, Pathfinders at Over a Celt. So today we'll be playing Pathfinders at Over a Celt from the Campaign Market Garden book. The table is set up with just a simple, simple open field with a couple of hills and trees all the way around the edges. The deployment, the three American teams will enter the board based on the sticks rule, and the German patrols will start at diametrically opposed corners of the north and south edges. The objective is to, for the Americans is to set out identification panels and operate the Eureka set. The German objective is to stop them from doing so. Because this game is meant to represent the advanced operators uh, that arrived, hit the ground about 30 minutes before the main drop, the length of this game is set to four turns. It is a decisive German victory if they are able to prevent me from setting up the panels or the Eureka device. They can deal with those simply by picking them up with a, on a run or an advance order. And they pick them up, it doesn't cost an action or anything, they just have to come in contact with it. For the American team to be victorious, I have to have the Eureka device or the identification panels on the table at the end of turn four, within 12 inches of the middle of the table. All right, first up for the Americans, we have three six-man Pathfinder units. Now, I personally do not own any Americans that are modeled with SMGs. So in the Pathfinder units, the NCO, has an SMG, and I'll be using these BARs as SMG. So anytime you see a BAR or an NCO, they have an SMG. Here's my radio man with the Eureka device and his helper, and that's pretty much it for this forward element of the 101st Airborne. We'll go take a look at some Germans. All right, and for the Germans, we have two squads of 9th SS. We have... Two NCOs with SMGs and the rest were rifles. We have one guy with SCG 44, but we're going to say it's just a K98. Anything else? Are they good? That's good. All right, so this is going to be our table 
for our game here. It's going to be a little bit slow because it's not a lot of units, but it's a big table still. Now, the entire edge of the board is supposed to be wooded. However, I don't have enough trees to go around the whole edge of the board. So we're going to say that everything that full six inches in from the board edge is will be dense, count as dense woodland for the sake of what we're doing here. Okay, so in this scenario, we use the stick rule, which means I will take an order dice and I'm going to stand over that way and I'm going to gently toss it at the table and that's where my group of paratroopers will And then land. we line them up behind the dice. So our three airborne units have landed there. We got one partially in the woods. This one is fairly well into the tree. I have two units that have landed in unsuitable terrain. They're within six inches of the edge, so they've landed in this wooded area. So this unit, as well as this unit, are gonna have For to take the unit on the southern edge. That'll be a one pin and one casualty. That'll be one pin and one casualty. It is not, imp this is not impassable terrain, but it will give you soft cover um, if you're behind it. And if you go down behind it, it will give you um, bonuses. So first order dice to the Americans, who I'm gonna start off with this unit that is already kind of out in the open. And we're gonna move them with a run order towards the middle. Actually, no. I'm not gonna run them towards the middle. I'm gonna run them this way. Ending that run action right here where they can look out, see their compatriots just poking out of the wood line on the other Next order dice. German. German patrol advancing just up the edge a little bit, staying within the wood line. German dice. This is most excellent for me because I get some information before. Also me. advancing just up the board edge a little bit. Staying in the wood line still, but moving forward. Last two dice in the bag are American. So I'm going to be making an advance move with both of these units, but as always with bolt action, you must take the order test before you do anything or you will fail the order test when you go back. As U.S. Test. Airborne, they are veterans, so they're testing on a nine with one pin. That's a 10. So Southern unit will just go down. Northern unit is good. They can move forward. In, in the activation here all the way out of the woods getting themselves ready to make a dash for the middle of the board here in a little bit to set up this equipment unfortunately my specialist team is still sitting over there in round two the germans will have two fresh units of reinforcement showing up in the opposite corners so one unit that's not right here and one unit there. First dice of round two is going to be German. Choosing to advance this unit through the woods. Still not out of the tree line, but moving forward. Oh, an American dice. Gonna activate this unit of Pathfinders, and they're going to run, I think, just to the other side of this. Ending up right there, just looking over that hill, kind of keeping an eye on the wood line. This I'm not thrilled about. I didn't want to go again yet, so I'm gonna to have to take a second and think about what I want to do here. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no worries. Sometimes I need a second to get myself together, um, especially with bolt action, which I haven't played. I played a, a little demo game with my buddy the other day, but I haven't played bolt action in a little while, so we'll get it together. Um, if we do something wrong, guys, let me know in the comments, but when you do, give me a page number so that I can look it up and, and help commit it to memory because I need to see things to remember them sometimes. Um, I'm gonna take this unit of airborne. I'm just gonna run them over the hill. D to D to D. This is their run is up to 12 inches. I'm moving way less than 12, so no real need to. Measure yeah, to measure it. I just want to get them into a better position. Finally, the German dice. Finally, making it out of the trees with one of the groups of SS. And that'll be the last American dice. In the Gotta take an order test with one pin. Looking for a nine. That's an eight. Shaking off that pin and finishing their advance move out of the tree line, putting them in position to be able to get to the middle to set up the Eureka and for my other two units to hopefully still be there to set Last up some two air. dice or German dice. Let's see what he decides. German SS advancing out of the tree line, lining up to take some shots on my specialist unit right here with the Eureka device who just shook their pin. Let's see if he, he can has hit. four shots with rifles. He moved, takes it to a four from a three, and it's long range with the rifles, taking it to a five. So four shots looking for fives. Two hits, so I'll get at least one pin. Let's see if he can wound. Looking for fives to wound, because I'm vets. 
No wound, just the a other pe- German squad advancing up through the still staying in the trees a little bit to avoid being shot at or anything else. So that's gonna do it for round two. I am most likely, I'm not gonna be able to get the Eureka device set up because it says that they have to be stationary the whole of round three. And they have to be within 12 of the center of the board, which we marked with this little 11th airborne token. However, I will be able to get some of the identification panels set up. So I still have a chance at securing a victory for the Americans. We'll see. There's a lot of Germans on the board against this little bit of little bit of American force. But hey, that's what the Airborne did. Still okay, does. So at the beginning of turn three, the Germans are supposed to get four more units of reinforcements for their patrols. However, we only have three more units. So whatever, it's a narrative play game. It's not a huge deal. So one of them's gonna come on, on this board edge, another one on this board edge, and then the last one on that far board edge. I really wanted to go first here, but that's okay. Um, German dice, first activation of round okay, three. So SS advancing up out of the wood line and firing on the group of specialist panth, path, panth, panth finders. Path finders. Okay, so in that unit, he's got one SMG on the junior NCO and then all the pri- privates have rifles. So that'll be six shots. He moved which will bump the rifles to four, not the SMG, because it has assault. However, the uh, SMG is longer than six inches, so it'll be long range, so everything hits on fours. Two hits. And wounded on fives because they're vets. No wounds, Outstanding. just standing. Managed to draw an American dice. That's very helpful here. So that unit is just going to advance and deploy a identification panel. Now, in order to deal with this, the Germans would have to move with an advance or a run and pick it up. It's a quick action. They can grab it on the run, but they have to pick it up off the table um, to prevent the Americans from being able to drop in. And also, fun note, we found another unit of Germans that we didn't know we had. There's Cannoli the Warhound. Look at him. (laughs) Isn't he majestic? Uh, So we got this unit of uh, SS, the fourth unit that just showed up a little bit after their friends. They were having a beer and a sausage, but they caught up. That will be the German dice. SS unit advancing. Still got part of them in the tree line, so if I were to take shots at them, they would get a cover bonus. But I don't know that I'm going to plan on taking shots anybody this turn. I just want to get some panels out. Coming back to next order dice. All right, we got an American dice. We're going to bring this unit on an advance towards the middle. They're going to deploy their panel. Pulling back and ended up right here, deploying their panel and drawing the next order dice. This will be German dice. So this unit of SS advances into their move right there and going to take some more shots into these specialists. Two shots on the SMG hitting on threes. One hit, one miss. No one. Four shots on the rifles hitting on fours because he moved. One hit. Looking for a five because I'm a vet. And a wound. That'll be a casualty. So one pin and a dead soldier. Bloop. That'll be Germans up next. This unit of SS going to go for a run and move 12 up the board. we got another German dice, and it's probably going to be German for a little while because I only have one dice left in the bag, and they are closing in on me quick. Advancing up the board just a little bit. They can't run yet because they're still technically within that six-inch band of heavy, dense terrain for the wooded areas. Surprise, surprise, more Germans. This unit of SS advancing up the field, looking down that way at some airborns across the, the last cliff. dice is an American dice, which is just this specialist unit, and the rules say that they are not allowed, they must stay stationary on turn three anyways, so they're just going to rally and try to clear off some of these pins. On a 10 for the rally, because when you rally, you do not count your pin modifiers towards your morale. That's a seven, so they will rally for D6 plus one pins. For one, that'll pull two pins, leave them with a single Last two pin. dice in the bag are Germans, and that'll, we'll see what they're gonna do, and then that'll bring us into the last unit turn. Of SS game. moving up all the way out of the tree line to pop some more shots at my poor bedraggled unit of specialists. So SMG is out of range, leaving just the four rifle shots, which will be moved, takes it to a four, and long range takes it to a five. Come on now. One hit. Five. No wound. Just a pin. So last unit of SS just advancing up the board. Nothing really to shoot at or shots to take. So that'll bring us to our fourth 
And final round, look at all these Germans' oppositions. Whew, but I, I think I'm in a good spot. I don't think he's going to be able to actually get to any of my panels to disable them. He may shoot me off the board, but I don't think he's going to be able to pick up the panels. Which, that's the game, and that's that's the goal here. It's you know the men may fall, but the mission must succeed. Correct. So this German unit not going to move. They're just going to stand still and open fire. Cannoli, calm your warhound self down for a second. <laughs> um, they're just going to open fire into this unit. We'll work out some range and stuff in just a second. I am not going to go down here. SMG's first hitting on fours because of long range. Four rifles, Two hit. hits on three because it's not long range and they didn't move. Two hits. Four hits. Looking for fives to kill. One casualty. Possible exceptional. So roll that up. No exceptional damage. German dice again is out of the bag. We got an advance order from this unit of SS, gonna open fire on this group this of airborne. The same thing as last time, the SMG two shots will be hitting on fours. No penalty for movement on the SMG because of the assault rule, just the penalty for long range. So looking for fours on the SMG. One hit, looking for threes on the rifles. Every two hits on a five. Two wounds. And a okay. possible exceptional. No exception. Them. Two men, or three men down total because I lost one in the initial jump with a pin marker. Germans again. This unit of SS gonna stand and fire at the specialist unit of Pathfinder. This will be the same thing. Uh, fours for the SMGs, threes for the rifle. SMG. Two hits. And the rifles. Three hits. Everything Ooh. on a five because I'm a veteran. Whew, that will cause me to take a break test. And you got some chances at some exceptional damage there? Oh, you want to go roll the exceptional? Yeah, go ahead and roll your exceptionals. Let's do that. Because that would be our next step, I think. So, no exception. Point of order. Um, I've This has affected one or two rolls, but obviously we're way too far into this to correct that. But the Pathfinder teams have a rule called exceptional training, which means that anytime they take a morale test, it is always on their unmodified morale test of 10. So as I take my break test right here for these specialist units, even though they have three pins right now, I'm still gonna be testing on 10. It's kind of like a better so stuff. I need less than a 10. That is a six so they will not break and run. This patrol unit moving up the field to the back side of the hill. Gonna take some shots at this unit of airborne. Two SMG shots hitting on sixes because of long range and intervening terrain. No hits there. And then four rifles on fives because they moved and intervening terrain. Two hits. Over fives to wound. One possible exceptional. Exceptional, who you wanna kill? Okay, you can kill the NCO. Again, um, it's not going to affect them because any, with the exceptional training that I'm going to remember now, anytime, again, they take a morale test, it's always on their unmodified. One man killed, not enough to trigger a break test because they had three and lost one. Okay, so we got one pin here. I'm going to take that test. A 10. That's a six. They'll lose the pin, and then they're going to make an advance just to reposition and then take some shots. In their move right here. They're gonna take some shots at this unit. I got an SMG that's gonna be long range, so a four. No hits. And then I got four four rifles, four rifles left because the other SMG is dead. These will be on threes. So two hits. Wounding on fours because they are regulars. No wounds, just a pin marker. Single yep. Single American dice. I'm gonna just try to stand. I'm just gonna try to shoot with them. Actually, no, I'll advance a little bit. We're just gonna reposition, get that SMG a little bit closer. Oh yeah, let me do that first. Good ten. Eight's in reposition right here. We're gonna take some shots at this SMG's unit. SMG's hitting on a five because long range and a pin marker. Two hits, all right. Uh, one rifle hitting on a three or a four with the pin marker. Misses, four is to kill. One dead German. So there's the German dice, which will be this unit firing at the last remaining special. I have chosen to go down with my one remaining specialist. So that'll be all of his shots at minus one for small team and minus two for being down. So everything's going to be hitting on six. 
One hit. Let's see if you wound. Looking for five. Oh, that'll do it. So that is a dead specialist unit. He will press the button on his Eureka device and self-destruct it before falling to enemy fire. Last three dice in the bag will be German Three dice. remaining German order dice. Uh, this unit ran, this unit ran. This unit, however, has advanced and will be taking some shots on this group of path. Four rifle shots here. Long range takes it to four and moved takes it to fives. Roll that beautiful bean footage. One hit, looking for a five. No wound, just bringing us to the end of round four, which is the end of this scenario. Now, even though the American Pathfinder teams have sustained some really, really, really heavy casualties, they did manage to get two of the identification panels down on the board to signal to the, the drops, the men that are coming behind them where they need to jump. So even with those massive casualties and the fact that if this were to continue, these Americans would definitely not survive, that is for today. An American, video, an American victory. So stick around for a few seconds if you'd like to. Keith and I are going to sit down and have a little sit and talk about the game. All right, War Gamers, thanks for uh, for sticking around. We're going to do a little uh, little post game talk here, see what uh, our thoughts on the game were. So I am fairly new to Bolt Action. I started playing in June, July of 2021, and painted my Airborne Army really, really, really fast. And then I'm still plugging through. The German side, but it's always, it's always been the match play stuff. This is my first time. I've had campaign books. This is my first time actually getting to play one of the missions from the campaign books, and I'm really, really, really excited about this. This is kind of the aspect of the game that most intrigued me in the beginning. Now, Keith, you're pretty new to bolt action as well, though, right? Yeah, I think this is like my sixth game overall since I got my army, or since I got my minis painted up. That's what we like to hear. That's what we like to hear. New new players playing games. Um, this got real crazy real quick. I like even like reading through the directions, I didn't I didn't process how many Germans were gonna be showing up on the field. Um, that was a uh, that was absolutely <laughs> terrifying. Yeah. Um, to see that many Germans just coming out of the trees like that, that's it absolutely, absolutely insane. But luckily. The old old airborne managed to lead the way as Pathfinders got in there. They got their panels down. I was really bummed out that my uh, my specialist unit with the Eureka couldn't make it to the middle of the board to get that set up. You jerk! <laughs> Look at him laughing about it. He thinks it's funny. He thinks it's funny that my you know they got pinned down turn one. But it's you know that was that was the way it was when these guys were jumping into these these zone these drop zones. You know they didn't know if they're gonna hit a tree or land in a river. You know there's cut cords and then they got to keep rolling you lost a couple guys couldn't get their cords cut or you know landed wrong it it happens and it and while it's important to remember especially with bolt action that this is a game not a simulation it's fun to have these rules that flavor up the game a little bit and give it a different experience other than you know playing against an army of japanese spearmen or an army of english gurkhas or any of the other you know meta Listen, here at World of Wargaming, if we're about anything, it's not it's not meta gaming. We want to play fun lists, do fun things, try to make fun content. My, I would have to say my all-star for this game, the, the unit that got it for me was that first unit that got up on the hill, then moved over the hill, then to the middle and dropped it. They sustained the fewest casualties. Um, they just, they were my all-stars. They're the, they're the ones that I'm here. I'm gonna, I can't wait to get them back next time, get them back to base, get them some R&R, &R, and then get them back into the field. What about you, Keith? I think my top tier unit, I would have to say, would be one of my reinforcement units that came in on what turn three. Came on turn three and then just came cleared up three. the board. Yeah. Yeah, if you could have pushed up a little bit faster, a little bit sooner, you yeah, might could have got it, to those panels. But yeah, the fact that's what that got to me was the fact coming through the dense coverage, not being able to run. Yeah, not being able to run that first activation was tough. I mean. And that's just, you know, too, like my sticks, if my sticks had landed differently, it could have been a very, very different game. You know, those sticks landing out towards the edges of the table, even though I was trying to, you know, just plink, just kind of use some other skill sets yep. to put that order dice right in the middle of the table. It just, it wasn't having it, it wasn't hearing it, it wasn't trying to do it. But I really like the mechanic. It's flavorful. I think I may avoid doing it with dice in the future. I may use like 
a poker chip or something like something of yeah. similar weight, but it's not going to bounce and roll all over the place. Yeah. I don't want to you know bounce a dice the wrong angle in one of these glass cases around the studio and, and shatter that IKEA glass or anything like that. But um, yeah, that's first mission. Um, what was it? Airdrop over Osterfe- Osterfelt, I think, yes. is, the, is, is the name of the mission from the Market Garden, is what we're playing. Market Garden campaign for Bolt Action 2nd Edition. Um, thank you so much for stopping by yeah, and playing bro. some games with us, Keith. We appreciate that, man. And thank you guys out there um, at home who have decided to take some of your time out of your day to hang out with Keith and I uh, while we roll dice and push toy soldiers around the table. I hope y'all have a great day. Thank you so much for stopping by. We'll see y'all next time. And until we do see you again, may the dice be ever in your favor. That does it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in to World of Wargaming. If you've enjoyed the content that you saw today, consider hitting that like button for me. If you want to see more content like what you saw today, consider hitting that subscribe button and hitting that bell for notifications so that you get alerts whenever I post new content. And if you like what you saw so much that you would like to contribute to the continuation of it, then check out the description below. You'll find a link to the Patreon account for the studio. Um, And there are numerous tiers there structured for however little or however much you would like to help out. And I want you to know that regardless of any of those things, if you do any of those things or don't do any of those things, I'm incredibly grateful that you stopped by and hung out today. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I hope that the dice are ever in your favor.